In this video I am going to take you back in time and look at the 2011 Groundhog Day blizzard over the Midwest. I will go over what the radar looked like at certain time frames and then at the end we'll get into snowfall totals, show some live reports from the weather channel and some snowfall and wind gust reports from the storm. We start out on the morning of January 31, 2011 at 6 a.m. Some light freezing rain and sleet mix was in and south of Kansas City, with light snow north and west of that in Omaha and Minneapolis. As we move on the snow moved into Des Moines by 9 a.m. and intensified in southwest Minnesota where they were now receiving moderate snow. While areas in central Missouri were still seeing a light wintry mix with light rain south of that in Joplin and Springfield. By noon on the 31st the two different areas of precipitation started to merge over in Missouri. This caused light to moderate snow to develop over northern Missouri and even some snow back in Kansas City for a short time. Areas to the north in Iowa and Minnesota were still receiving light snowfall with temperatures in the teens and low 20s. In Columbia, Missouri the light wintry mix continued to fall making travel treacherous. By mid-afternoon the precipitation had overspread much of central Illinois, with a light wintry mix now falling in Springfield, Illinois. Light to moderate snow in Peoria and light train down south in Effingham. By sunset the precipitation would begin to intensify over central Illinois, and in areas like Columbia and Quincy would change over to snow, while Champaign switched to a wintry mix. Indianapolis had just seen the onset of precipitation begin in the last hour. Also moderate rain was falling down in Effingham, with light rain in Carbondale and Vincennes. By 9 p.m. on the 31st St. Louis was nearing an end of wave 1 of the storm, with the light wintry mix that had been falling since mid to late afternoon about to come to an end. Meanwhile an area like Fort Wayne, Indiana was just getting started with moderate snow falling. Also to mention Chicago was seeing light snow and areas in Iowa and Minnesota who had been seeing snow since early in the morning, were still seeing some light snowfall. By midnight it was snowing in Toledo and just moving into Detroit. With a pretty decent band over moderate snow set up in northern Indiana and southern Michigan. By 3 it was starting to move out of the region but a light wintry mix was still falling over central Indiana and Ohio, as well as some light snow in Michigan. Indiana and Ohio. Meanwhile the real storm was getting its act together over Texas while people slept. The first bit of precipitation had already gotten underway in southwestern Missouri, where moderate snow was falling in Joplin. Here is a look at snowfall from wave 1 of the storm. The heaviest totals were over northern Iowa and southern Minnesota where 3 to 5 inches had fallen. Also an area like Chicago had picked up an inch or so but that would be nothing compared to what was coming later that day. It's amazing Carl because that was a 23 inch snowstorm. It was a record setting blizzard that just absolutely brought Chicago to its knees. This one may go bigger. It's hard to fathom. Now we've got 274 trucks here in Chicago that can handle that. In addition to that, another 27 smaller plows that they use for some of the narrow streets. And in addition to that, they can do what they call a quick hitch, put 200 plows on garbage trucks, which would give them over 500 vehicles to keep the city streets clear. They're going to have their hands full, all 500 of them, because of how heavy the snow is going to come. Chicago, a little obscured because of a little bit of a light snow that we've seen this morning. This is not the big show yet, though. That's going to happen much later today. Lake Michigan, it's frozen over. You can see how we've got a coating of ice up on top here, right? We're expecting 12 to 14 foot waves near the shore, which just means a lot of this ice, especially in the thin spots, is going to break up and then the water will go over Lakeshore Drive where the cars are flowing pretty nicely right now. So we've got some flooding issues in addition to the flat out snow, wind and temperature concern. Now let's talk specifically about what's going on out there. As Carl was alluding to, nine different states are under blizzard warnings right now. That does include Illinois, where non-essential travel is discouraged right now. All the moisture is coming from the south to the north. Chicago is going to be in the sweet spot. There are going to be multiple locations where we get anywhere from, say, half a foot in a location like central Oklahoma and Oklahoma City, upwards to two feet plus. A Peoria, Chicago, 
over toward maybe Toledo and Detroit. Large cities, they're going to be hugely impacted by this. Carl, I've got my hand held out of my anemometer with me. I want to show this to you real quick. The top number there, the wind has been gusting as high as 45 miles per hour, generally been sustained at around 20. The bottom number you see on the screen there is the wind chill. It's been down in the single digits all morning long. Guess what? It's only going to get worse from here on out, if you can believe it. Schools are in today. May not be the case tomorrow, though. Uh, just an incredible storm. Mike, thank you so much, and we'll talk to you again uh, many more times before the day is through. By morning, the wintry mix had moved back into St. Louis and snow had began to fall in Columbia. Joplin was still seeing moderate to heavy snowfall, which would continue for the rest of the day. As we move on to 9 a.m., Columbia and Kansas City were now receiving moderate snow, with areas to the west of Joplin reporting heavy snowfall. Springfield, Illinois was starting to see some snow and the wintry mix was about to begin in Indianapolis. By noon it was icing in Indy and an area of extremely heavy snowfall was coming down over in Missouri with rates at 3 to 4 inches per hour being reported. I-70 in Missouri was getting clobbered, and it forced the Missouri Department of Transportation to close I-70 all the way from Kansas City to St. Louis. This was the first time any interstate had ever been closed in Missouri history. The heavy snow band continued to pivot its way through Missouri and was over Columbia by 3 p.m. in the afternoon. By this time light snow had just started falling in Chicago, with moderate to heavy snow to the south in Kankakee. Champaign, Indianapolis and Columbus were seeing a wintry mix of sleet and freezing rain that was making for very dangerous driving conditions over the area. The icing was just getting started, though. Also ice, a major problem uh, could be an inch of ice centered around central Indiana, back down into southern parts of Illinois and into parts of Ohio. And we may get some uh, pretty good icing there in New Jersey and Pennsylvania as well. So that's certainly something we're going to be watching out for. By sunset on February 1st, moderate snow was falling from eastern Kansas all the way up to Toledo, Ohio. And ice was falling from south central Illinois through central Ohio and one location that was receiving ice was Lafayette, Indiana. Absolutely, some two feet of snow in Chicago and also a part of our live team coverage. We have Janelle Klein. She's not too far from Chicago in Lafayette, Indiana, where we've had mainly icy conditions and sleet and freezing rain. And what problems is that causing, Janelle? It's causing a lot of problems, Nick and Vivian, one of which, of course, is driving because there's about an inch of, of ice on the roads and freeways, so people having a tough time getting around. People also having a tough time flying in and out of Indianapolis, although the airport there says they have been able to keep one of their runways open in order to allow both takeoffs and arrivals, so that is good news. But this storm is getting worse. You might be able to hear the freezing rain and sleet that's hitting my jacket and hitting my microphone, and the wind is picking up. It's getting so strong out here, really a big change from this morning when there really wasn't as much wind. So we know that this storm is getting stronger, and that's of great concern to people here in this area who are worried not only about the ice, but also about the fact that they may lose power. A storm two years ago not knocked out power to thousands of people, some of them for nearly two weeks. And there's a big concern here that that could happen again. So we're seeing a lot of people out being prepared for that, getting generators, getting uh, extra supplies, getting groceries, because they know that they may be in their homes for some time, uh, especially if we get a lot of snow here. And you guys, what's interesting, there's been an awful lot of snow. Some parts of Indiana have seen 75 inches already this year. And some of that has come just in one day. There was one storm, Nick and Vivian, where they got 26 inches in a day. So a tough winter already, and this storm could be one of the worst in state history. By 9 p.m., moderate to heavy snow was falling over northern Missouri, southeastern Iowa, northern Illinois, northern Indiana, and southern Michigan. Also an icy mix was falling in north-central Indiana and northern Ohio with rain being reported down in Louisville and Cincinnati where temperature were in the 40s. As Groundhog Day arrived in the Midwest the storm was still raging on over Chicago, Illinois, where Jim Cantori was reporting live for the Weather Channel that night. These are down maybe about a sixteenth of a mile. It's amazing to me. I mean, we got mass transit, which is still running, but I'll tell you one thing, I don't see a lot of people on the buses right now. So that is great news. People are just staying home and definitely hunkering down here with this. Radar showing an increase in precipitation 
and we are hearing that Lakeshore Drive could possibly close down within the hour. It is 9 o'clock local time. It's snowing at about 2 inches an hour. This is our toughest rate that we've certainly seen with the snowfall. Plus, we have had almost continuous thunder and lightning uh, as a result of this dynamic storm. I mean, we are just getting into this, and this is where we have the potential paralysis on the roads, even down through Michigan Avenue. I mean, you can hardly see 100 feet right now. This is incredible. Dynamic storm coming into fruition right now into the Chicago metro area. Mother Nature is unleashing quite a show here tonight in Chicago. Thunder and lightning, loud lightning, just rolling down Michigan Avenue as we speak. And you know what? That means the snowfall rates are increasing. Two to three inches an hour, almost eight on the ground now at Midway, and winds gusting to 60 miles an hour. What a show tonight in the Midwest. The problems are we got people trapped on the roads. Oh, Jesus! Listen to that! Son of a... That's unbelievable! <laughs> the storm continued over northern Illinois throughout the night but was lightening by 6 a.m. Although in Chicago where some lake enhancement of the snow was occurring it was still coming down around an inch an hour. But by mid-morning it was mostly moved out with just light snow falling from Chicago over to Detroit. Now here is a time-lapse version of those maps we showed throughout this video. Here is the snowfall map for the storm. If you were in the dark blue you hit anywhere between 3 and 5 inches with locally higher amounts. The light purple is 5 to 8 inches which includes Des Moines. The second shade of purple is for 8 to 12 inches and the dark purple is for 12 to 18 inches. The hot pink color is for areas that received 18 to 24 inches, which included Columbia, Missouri and Chicago, Illinois. Also if you look closely there is a small 24-inch plus region located just north of Chicago on the Illinois-Wisconsin state line. Some areas outside of that did receive two feet as well, but the map is just to give you a general idea of how it looked. Now for some snowfall reports from the storm. Warrensburg, Missouri picked up 23 inches and O'Hare Airport in Chicago received over 21 inches. Butler, Missouri picked up 19 and Rockford, Illinois has 15. Since this was a blizzard there were strong winds with it and the strongest gust was by the lake in Illinois at 70 miles per hour. O'Hare and Pontiac gusted to 61, while Aurora gusted as high as 59. With the deep snowpack on the ground, the temperatures will tank over the next several days. Well, Carl, you know, the other huge story here is that it is brutally cold and we've got more cold air in store for us as we go into tonight. In fact, dangerous levels. Here's a look at some of our feels like temperatures or the wind chill values. Bismarck, it is 17 below zero, so it's very cold. Minneapolis is 13 below. Duluth, your temperature right now is about 10 below. And you look at some of the temperatures that we're going to see as we go from today into tomorrow. They're going to shift slightly. Here you can see that to the south and the east. Check it out, Chicago to Kansas City. We're talking about wind chill values that are in the teens below zero, so extremely cold. In fact, we can take a look at some of the actual temperatures, and they also tell the story. Look at Denver, five. That's it for the high today. That is 40 below average, and in Oak City, 39 below average with a high there of 10. Carl, the cold air continues Thursday into Friday. And I have one last thing here to show and that is the map of advisories, watches and warnings from the National Weather Service on the morning of February 1, 2011. With blizzard warnings, in orange, stretching from Oklahoma to Michigan and winter storm warnings, in pink, from Texas to Maine. That is all for today's video and I would ask if you enjoyed it, that you leave a like and subscribe. Also comment if you have another storm you would like me to make a video on and I will try to get to it if I can.